So today we'll be talking about a case study on an animated film named Inside My Mind. It's a film by Anurup Karketa. So this is the introduction of the film now. The director is trying to explore what's inside the mind apparently here. So the mind is its own place and in itself can make a heaven of hell, a hell of heaven. And this was written by John Milton in Paradise Lost. So Inside My Mind is an experience which tries to connect the thoughts that run wild within the character who is uninterruptedly being exploited at a repeated instance of the transient moment. The story primarily tries to convey the feelings and emotions of a mind which tries to tame itself but fails to do so. The plot takes viewers to a conversation occurring between the interviewee and the interviewer. The mockery and an uncomfortable attitude of the interviewer starts diluting the concentration of the interviewee and dissolves him to take a dive in his imaginations. He starts playing with every possible strand of his wild imagination and does the meanest possible things which he could with the interviewer. So let's take you through the research. So the director started with a small research on dreams because dreams are something which occurs in absence of a conscious mind. The director tried to study how the human mind works when it is in a complete unconscious state. He tries to understand the journey which our dreams take us to. Places far beyond our imaginations and things far beyond our thoughts. Some say we dream a desire which is a sequence of buried thoughts in the back of our mind. So, he wanted to understand the physics behind the dream so that he could connect the understanding more with his story. So dreams are highly symbolic, containing both overt meanings, manifest content, as well as underlying unconscious thoughts, which is the latent content. Dreams are successions of images, ideas, emotions, and sensations that occur involuntarily in the mind during certain stages of sleep. Dreams have been seen as a connection to the unconscious. They range from normal and ordinary to overly surreal and bizarre. Now, memory in dreams, uh, that all the material composing the content of a dream is somehow derived from experience. That is, it is reproduced or remembered in the dream. Why dreams are forgotten after waking? In the waking state, we commonly very soon forget a great many sensations and perceptions because they are too slight to remember and because they are charged with only a slight amount of emotional feeling. Dreams in most cases lack sense and order. Dream compositions by their very nature are insusceptible of being remembered and they are forgotten because as a rule they fall to pieces the very next moment. The fact that most people take but little interest in their dreams is conducive to the forgetting of dreams. The conscious and the unconscious mind. Your conscious mind is what is seen but the unconscious mind itself is much much more than what is seen. The conscious mind includes everything that we are aware of. This is the aspect of our mental processing that we can think and talk about rationally. A part of this includes our memory, which is not always part of consciousness, but can be retrieved easily at any time and brought into our awareness. The unconscious mind. The unconscious mind is a reservoir of feelings, thoughts, urges and memories that are outside of our conscious awareness. Most of the contents of the conscious are unacceptable or unpleasant, such as feelings of pain, anxiety or conflict. The waking mind communicates with the unconscious mind through symbols. When you want something, you create a symbol for it. The unconscious mind does not respond to the desire. It responds to the symbol. It responds to the underlying image and then attempts to manifest that or something better. Your beliefs are also symbols in your mind. For an idea, let us say, we think love, what image comes to your mind? Let us say peace, what symbol comes to your mind? And it is not the word peace, it is some sort of image. Now every object in your life is a symbol for something else. So also the director talks about psychoanalysis. Now Sigmund Freud was the founder of psychoanalysis and the psychodynamic approach to psychology. This school of thought emphasized the influence of the unconscious mind on behavior. Freud believed that the human mind was composed of three elements, the ID, the ego, and the superego. 
Now the key psychoanalysis terms are as follows. Conscious. In Freud's psychoanalytical theory of personality, the conscious mind includes everything that is inside of our awareness. This is the aspect of our mental processing that we can think and talk about in a rational way. Now what is a defense mechanism? It is a tactic developed by the ego to protect against anxiety. Defense mechanisms are thought to safeguard the mind against feelings and thoughts that are too difficult for the conscious mind to cope up with. In some instances, defense mechanisms are thought to keep inappropriate or unwanted thoughts and impulses from entering the conscious mind. Ego The ego is a part of personality that mediates the demands of the ID, the superego and reality. The ego prevents us from acting on our basic urges created by the ID but also works to achieve a balance with our moral and idealistic standards created by the superego. ID The personality component made up of unconscious psychic energy that works to satisfy basic urges, needs and desires. Superego Superego is the component of personality composed of our internalized ideals that we have acquired from our parents and from society. The superego works to suppress the urges of the ID and tries to make the ego behave morally rather than realistically. So the unconscious is basically a reservoir of feelings, thoughts, urges and memories that are outside of our conscious awareness. Most of the contents of the unconscious are unacceptable or unpleasant such as feelings of pain, anxiety or conflict. According to Freud, the unconscious continues to influence our behavior and experiences even though we are unaware of these underlying influences. Understanding Abnormal Psychology In order to understand abnormal psychology, it is essential to first understand what we mean by the term abnormal. On the surface, the meaning seems obvious. Abnormal indicates something that is outside of the norm. It is important to note that the distinction between normal and abnormal are not synonymous with good or bad. Consider a characteristic such as intelligence. A person who falls at the very upper end of the curve would fit under our definition of abnormal. This person would also be considered a genius. Obviously, this is an instance where falling outside of the norms is actually a good thing. When you think about abnormal psychology, rather than focus on the distinction between what is normal and what is abnormal, focus instead on the level of distress or disruption that a troubling behavior might cause. If a behavior is causing problems in a person's life or is disrupting to other people, then this would be an abnormal behavior that may require some type of mental health intervention. Components of personality while there are many different theories of personality, the first step is to understand exactly what is meant by the term personality. A brief definition would be that personality is made up of the characteristic patterns of thoughts, feelings and behaviours that make a person unique. In addition to this, personality arises from within the individual and remains fairly consistent throughout life. Some of the fundamental characteristics of personality include consistency, now what is consistency? There is generally a recognizable order and regularity to behaviors. Essentially people act in the same ways or similar ways in a variety of situations. Psychological and Physiological Personality is a psychological construct, but research suggests that it is also influenced by biological processes and needs. It impacts behaviors and actions. Personality does not just influence how we move and respond in our environment, it also causes us to act in certain ways. Multiple Expressions Personality is displayed in more than just behavior. It can also be seen in our thoughts, feelings, close relationships and other social interactions. Theories of Personality There are a number of different theories about how personality develops. Different schools of thought in psychology influence many of these theories. Some of these major perspectives in personality include type theories. Type theories are the early perspectives of personality. These theories suggested that there are limited number of personality types which are related to biological influences. Trait theories viewed personality as a result of internal characteristics that are genetically based. Psychodynamic theories of personality emphasize the influence of the unconscious on personality. Behavioral theories suggest 
that personality is a result of interaction between the individual and the environment. Behavioral theorists study observable and measurable behaviors, rejecting theories that take internal thoughts and feelings into account. Humanist theories emphasize the importance of free will and individual experience in the development of personality. The Big Five Dimensions of Personality Today, many researchers believe that there are five core personality traits. The Big Five are broad categories of personality traits. While there is a significant body of literature supporting this five-factor model of a personality, researchers don't always agree on the exact labels for each dimension. However, these five categories are usually described as follows. Extraversion This trait includes characteristics such as excitability, sociability, talkativeness, assertiveness, and high amounts of emotional expressiveness. Agreeableness This personality dimension includes attributes such as trust, altruism, kindness, affection, and other pro-social behaviors. Conscientiousness Common features of this dimension include high level of thoughtfulness with good impulse control and goal-directed behaviors. Those high in conscientiousness tend to be organized and mindful of details. Neuroticism Individuals high in this trait tend to experience emotional instability, anxiety, moodiness, irritability, and sadness. Openness This trait features characteristics such as imagination and insight, and those high in this trait also tend to have a broad range of interests. It is important to note that each of these five personality factors represents a range between two extremes. For example, extraversion represents a continuum between extreme extraversion and extreme introversion. In the real world, most people lie somewhere in between the two polar ends of each dimension. So the final thoughts are, behavior involves an interaction between a person's underlying personality and situational variables. The situation that a person finds himself or herself in plays a major role in how the person reacts. However, in most cases, people offer responses that are consistent with their underlying personality traits. So let's talk about the symbols understood by the director, in his own words. My interpretation. Now this is famous surrealistic painting made by Salvador Dali in 1931. The painting shows melting watches which was an interpretation of melting cheese in the sun. The watches, as Dali explained, symbolized a tired time which portrayed a slow moment, a pause time which ticked away slowly into the future. The painting influences me with the prospect of metaphor used by the artist. A normal clock wouldn't have reached out with the purpose of conveying the meaning, but mere changing the shape provides us with the numerous thoughts of intervening it. I have tried to take my inspiration from the thoughts of the artist of how he tries to metaphorically convey the meaning through my characters in the film. Also, a portrait of Lucian Freud made by Francis Bacon in 1965 puts forward two dimensions of the human face. I've tried to study the transformations made by the artist and try to incorporate the same feeling which the portrait conveys of being transformed. These are some of the inspirational images. There are some of the pictures which inspired me with their visual expressions, meaning and the way they have been done. The abstractness of the paintings allowed me to take the deep dive to identify their meaning and use as an inspiration for my film. These are some of the paintings by first the Francis Bacon painting, which is a portrait of Lucien Freud. Salada Dali's The Temptation of Saint Anthony, Rua Ruadis Blinded, Salada Dali's Visage of War, Damien Hirst Black Sheep, and Andres Serrano Piss Christ. Now let's talk about the visual development followed by the director. So it starts with writing a script. So as you see here, this is a script which the director wrote, which describes the basic uh, structure of the film and how uh, one shot and one scene uh, goes after the another. After freezing the story plot, the director moved towards significant part, that is, sketching the characters of the film and also giving a different look to the film. So he started with the brainstorming of the human mind, which elaborated on the different roles the human mind plays within us. Then he observed works of different artists who described a vast range of emotions in their painting. He also got inspired from the execution uh, by the artist and the efforts they had made in their masterpieces, and he tried to develop his own characters with his own style. So on the right side you see a mind map which talks about 
what the mind goes through. So there's thinking, dreams, conscious mind, unconscious mind, memory, and the feelings which, as described, could be angry, sad, frustration, happy, loneliness, pain, enjoy, celebration, care, and respect. So these are some of the visual development for the storyboard. Uh, if you see, the, the film has a very simplistic line drawing style to it. Uh, these are some of the shots, first the window shot, then the camera slowly pans to the artworks on the wall, uh, then the boss looking at the portfolio, the camera pans to the fish in the water tank, and the time slows down, and the boss is staring at the interviewee, uh, he's changing position and asks questions, uh, some of the background changes to a small town that kind of transforms. Uh, boss picks a book from the shelf slowly and you know the book slams on the book table so it's basically like a step by step of the entire film narrated through visuals so you can look at the storyboard more and how the story progresses and some of the transitions in this you know in the visual happening and the story ends so a bit more about the character explorations as a part of the visual development. Initially, the director wanted a character to look like a mix between human and an animal, to express the wild imagination of the other person's mind. Now, the initial character was further not worked on since it was unable to connect the meaning through them. As the animal features would distort the meaning of the story, also the director wanted to keep it similar to his own experiences. So this is one of the image designed for the film. Uh, and here is the final character of the film and he wanted the main character to give an expression of rude and an annoying boss so the final design character fits perfect as required in the film. Some of the environment references and textures so his film had a small town scene as per the need of the script so he has taken the references of these shapes and style of those building and houses uh, for the film. Some of the textures here explored uh, tile patterns and you know rough wall textures it's a small town, so he wanted the houses and buildings to look old and natural and uh, thus use these textures. Some of the final houses and buildings here, you see uh, how beautifully the shapes and you know the line drawing with some textures have been applied to come up with the final visual language to the film. The production techniques was as follows. Before starting the film, it is very important to understand and plan the process and technique to be used for the film. In his film, He's used Photoshop, Flash and After Effects as the basic support software. All the layout and the storyboard was done in Photoshop. Entire animation was done in, was done in Flash and finally composited in After Effects. Later on, the music and sound design was done. Now, the sound plays a very important role in any visual narrative. His film is about how mind percepts things around him and how it interacts with them. So selecting the right sound was very important to express the feel, emotion and the stage of mind for the audience to understand. He wanted a complicated, abstract, blurred and kind of complex music when the interviewee is lost in his hallucination so that the viewer apprehends that he is somewhere else. So for this he had to mix some sounds and music together. Sound has really aided his film to make it more meaningful. Some of the references he is used to get inspired, some of the films and the books and music referred to. So the conclusion is that it was a great learning experience for the director while making this film. He learned the art of making film from scratch, the process and steps indulged in making a film. Through the project, he also discovered his strengths and weaknesses, not only in terms of creating the work, but also as evolving self. He also learned the importance of planning before starting a film and also being organized. Overall, it was a great learning experience and enjoyed making his film. So let's watch the film and understand the whole process. So where are you from? 
I I am from a very small town, but uh, it's a beautiful place. Uh, the houses we have are pretty different from here, and the streets are pretty narrow. And we all live close to each other. It's some sort of beautiful to see everyone living each other. So where have you worked before? Uh, I. I. What are you good at? Uh, okay. I, Your work is no different. So why have you come here? Every damn person thinks he's a designer. Where are you? Why have you worked here? Every damn person thinks he's a designer. Where have you worked before? Your work is no different. Your work is no different. So what are you good at? Okay, let's see. We'll give you a call. You may leave now. Thank you.